Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to uh, Modern Sales Power Hour. Trevor, how are you? Doing great, doing great, good to see you. Yeah, living the dream, that's what we like to hear. End of quarter you dream. Know. End of quarter dream, <laughs> you're so nice to be here. I guess like I was kind of shocked about that, that you guys aren't on the on the Salesforce uh, offset fiscal, right? Like uh, that's kind of like crazy, like, I mean, I've been on that for like four years. Um, it's kind of like, it was a super surprise to me. Um, where, was, where were the, the company you were at previously? You were at that or at Anaplan? Is that yeah, right? Anaplan was offset. And so that was, uh, that was nice. So you could actually like be with your family over the holidays. So they didn't, they didn't hate you on New Year's Eve. You're, like <laughs> flying to Aspen to get a signature or something stupid like that. <laughs> exactly. Got to get on a plane. Yeah. Um, Halloween awesome. was ruined though. Like Halloween, you're walking around with your kid, like trying to close the yeah, deal. On your phone. <laughs> Oh God, you're making me think about like what it's gonna happen, what it's gonna be like for 30 days from now for now for me. Yep. Um well um well we get folks kind of trickling in here. Um you got any big plans this weekend uh that you're you're super stoked on? Oh my ninth grade daughter is going to homecoming this weekend. So we're oh exciting. Uh, yeah, we're coordinating who's driving who where, what are they doing, uh what they shouldn't be doing, and uh, trying to just keep <laughs> Keep tabs. There's like a secret surveillance network of parents that are on a text thread together. There so, you go. You're gonna be like deploying like nest cams and and yeah. stuff like that. Like you know, all over the place. That's that's gonna be your uh, that's gonna be your evening this evening. I like it. I'm on surveillance um, duty. Uh, <laughs> surveillance duty. I think what we're gonna be um we're uh, we've we've been bad parents this this uh this year and we haven't taken our son to a, a Giants game yet this season and so we're gonna be hitting up the you know doing a little the little garlic fries doing a little nice. uh corn dog probably watch the giants lose so that'll be our uh <laughs> <It's> <laughs> past be time. Our... i know man this year's been a disaster for the giants um awesome well we can get jam in here so hey folks uh welcome to uh modern sales power hour i'm pete kazanji i'm your host um so you know while folks are kind of coming in here we'd love to give um folks a few moments to get familiar with zoom webinar interface so you know this event requires um audience participation so please do use the chat panel leverage the q a panel you know trevor is here and i am here to answer any sort of questions that'll pop up there's been questions who that have been submitted ahead of time but you know you have a, an illustrious uh seasoned seasoned uh uh sales leader here Fine. uh yeah <laughs> um to uh to to pick his brain and uh you know and, and mine as well so please do use those um you know, please do use, do use those resources as as possible. Um, so, for folks who are not uh, familiar, Power Hour is hosted by Modern Sales Pros. MSP is the world's largest revenue leadership community for those in sales management, sales and revenue operations, sales development, and the related disciplines. And so, the community's mission is to create an environment for our twenty seven thousand and growing members to answer questions they struggle to solve on their own, help them see around corners they may not know about. Uh, and so, you know, we do that through great live sessions, like what you're about to experience today through our robust online forum and in-person events. And so for folks who previously weren't, um, you know, added to MSP, we'll go ahead and add you after this event. Um, speaking of in-person events, we actually had a bang in uh, Dreamforce happy hour in, uh, was that last week, week before? I don't know, time flies. Um, we had 1,500, 1500 RSVPs and 500 people like cycled through the, um, I know it was bananas. We rented out De La Rosa right over by, um, right, right by Moscone Center. It was awesome. We like accidentally doubled our, our food and, um, and bar, <laughs> bar, bar tab. Like we were expecting it to be, you know, X and it ended up being two X, but that's okay. I think people are a little excited about uh, getting back into the swing of things. Uh, other big thing coming up with modern sales is uh, we actually have our Rev X um, Revenue Excellence Summit coming up here in, uh, in a couple of weeks here. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got 25 sessions with just banana speakers, like the CEO of Gainsight, the CEO of Outreach, um, CEO of Winning by Designs, Chief Product Officer of uh, of Gong, just like all sorts of amazing speakers. Um, for folks who want to join us, you know, it's um, you can get your your free registration there. We just dropped it into the chat. It should be super fun. Um, cool. So um, before we get started, kind of just a couple of reminders here. Uh, 
unique format. It's not a specific piece of content. We're going to be talking through the idea here is to be able to pick Trevor's brain, pick my brain. You're here to learn. And so with that, let's do some introductions. Um, I'll make mine really quick. Uh, my name is Pete Kazanji. I am the founder of MSP and also a co-founder um, and uh, CRO over here at Atrium. Uh, for folks who may not know, Atrium makes data-driven sales management software. It's software that helps sales managers, sales leaders, and, um, and reps use metrics to improve the performance of their teams. Um, and prior to Atrium, uh, I started a recruiting software company called Talentbin that was acquired by Monster Worldwide in 2014. After that, I ended up writing a book on startup sales called Founding, uh, called Founding Sales. So think about sales stuff just a little bit. Um, but enough about me. You guys are actually here to see and hear from Trevor. So, Trevor, um, you want to give folks a little bit of a, a little bit of context on what you spend your time on over there at uh, Captivate? I'm sure everybody is well familiar with Captivate IQ, you know, modern commissioning software. But maybe you can tell folks what you work on there and kind of some of the previous companies that you've you've done sales leadership at. Yeah, cool. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Captivate IQ, come take a look at CaptivateIQ.com. Uh, one of the leading incentive compensation management solutions. So I've spent, uh, I joined earlier this year, was brought on to help nice. build out the uh, enterprise motion uh, here, which has gone incredibly successfully. So and also just look yeah. after the uh, the global go to market as far as uh, being one of the more uh, seasoned, as you say, uh, sales leaders here. So I, I worked with a lot of the reps in different segments to do steel strategy, deal desking, things like that. Uh, make sure Love it opportunities correctly. I've been in the space for a long time. I like to say I, I started selling software when it was sold in boxes. And that's actually <laughs> true. Um, I started selling software in 1988, uh, after school in uh, in high school. So uh, I've seen really quite a few changes. That is absolutely a true story. Going yes. going like door to door to like Babbage's and like you know, <laughs> electronics boutique or like what? No, but back at a retail store, back when you'd go to a retail store and you, you'd go buy PFS, right? I'm kind of flashing back to the names of the products. Oh, you go by WordPerfect and stuff. I'm coming to the I box. remember WordPerfect. Oh yeah, for sure. That's, go ring that's, that up. that's awesome. What are the other SaaS companies you've been working at um, more recently? Yeah, so I was at Performio just before Captivate IQ. Uh, I did a long stint at uh, Anaplan. Started there pretty early. Had the opportunity oh, wow. to work with the uh, the founders there. So that was a great time to be there and learned a ton. No kidding. Um, and before that, I was at uh, uh, SAP and IBM Cognos for rounding out the, the last 20 something years. Oh, wow. Cool. BI, an OG BI guy. Yeah. Man, I started I'm a, off as a smart guy there too. I was a pre-sales guy in the beginning. Oh, wow. That's fast. That's fast. I'm, uh, you know, unsurprisingly, I'm kind of like a uh, student of the game and kind of like a historian of the BI space. Cause like Atrium is like it, it's related to that. Like we, we don't like to, we, we don't like to use the A word analytics. We talk about data-driven sales management because, you know, analytics is for the, uh, the propeller heads and the, and right. the boffins or whatever. We're trying to make it like very, like democratize and make it very practical for sales managers and, and sales leaders. But like, you got to know what's come before. And so like you guys, that like Cognos was uh, BI 1.0, you know, yeah. Cognos, Hyperion, business objects, yep. uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's a, uh, that's cool. That awesome. Cool well, stuff. we, well, we can get jam in here. I think one of the first things that I wanted to um, ask you about is, um, so you were talking about how you were brought in to Captivate to, um, to lead this new enterprise motion. Um, that's something that's like super top of mind for a lot of organizations. Like investors are frequently like, hey man, we got to get our ASPs up. We got to get our ASPs up. We got to get up, you know, got to go up market, got to go up market. Um, but it's not as easy as just like waving a magic wand at it or to be like, all right, let's like set, let's set the SDRs after like larger accounts. Um, there's a lot more, more to it. Like the sales motion has to change. It's oftentimes the marketing message has to change. And then yeah. definitely the, like the customer success motion has to change. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about like what some of the biggest challenges were that you guys address there and kind of like, you know, what, what people should kind of keep their eyes out for. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess fortunately for me, that, that process was well underway when I when I joined. Uh, so oh, nice. it wasn't as much uh, to to go in and fix, uh, for example, that um, Sweet. a lot of that was underway. But you're right. I mean, the, the it's not just a matter of going out and hiring an enterprise salespeople or creating that segment and selling it. Most yeah. companies, um, Captivate IQ included, you know, we're selling enterprise deals, uh, possibly opportunistically. We're like, oh, we got an inbound sure. for this large company. It's five times bigger than anything else. Is it going to work? Yeah, it works. Stand it up. Like maybe we should sell more of these. 
Uh, and I think that was the, uh, the impetus for looking for a guy like uh, like me. But the rest of the org really has to be behind it because if you're going to sell big software yep. to big companies, you have to be able to support big software at big companies. Yep. You need to have the right professional services group, the right customer experience group. Um, the customer success group has to be there ready to support mm -hmm. that. They, they're looking for that maturity in your product, but also in your operation. And I think mm -hmm. that's where a lot of companies that I talked to, companies that I interviewed um, before coming to Captive IQ, they were just like, no, we're just going to start selling. I'm like, well, <laughs> I use the example of uh, the statement of work. Like, well, let's look at your statement of work. How many pages is it? Like, oh, it's a few pages. Like, no, like that, that needs to be like 15, 30 pages long. I don't even know what's in it, but like, I can't send that to a customer, you know, that's going to buy a million dollars worth of software. They're not going to implement it on two pages. Of, we just, um, yeah, we, we need to be heavy. Um, it just, they need to have, have. Need to weigh it, right? Yeah, exactly. We need to be heavy. Um, that's interesting. Okay. So when, so when it comes to like, you know, using like, you know, let's use the customer success example. So, cause it sounds like, I mean, you know, knock on wood here, um, you guys like Captivate IQ was kind of in a fairly unique situation where, um, the, the solution that had primarily been focused for like mid-market accounts to date just like worked for, you know, for enterprise organizations, which, you know, I think you're going to make everybody on the, you know, on the call here kind of jealous there because invariably what most organizations run into is just like all the like, oh, product deficit after product deficit after yeah. product deficit after product deficit. So, so that's good. And like, you know, shout out to the Captivate uh, engineering and product team for like having a scalable, uh, a scalable solution. But like, what were the biggest things that are important? Like, let's use the customer success piece as an example there. Um, what were the biggest things that needed to change in order to make sure that that was like that motion was enterprise enterprise ready? Because you guys, I mean, I suppose you guys probably sell wall to wall. Like you don't enter in like the like an organization is not like, hey, we're going to use Captivate IQ for like AE compensation, but not yet for customer success compensation. Or do you start out in like you know take one bite of the apple and thus the like the other bites the success of the initial bite becomes very, very, very critical for the other bites. Is it wall to wall or is it expand like land and expand? It, it goes both ways. I think more often than not, it's um, in the smaller companies, it's the whole thing. And when oh, you get into the larger companies, yeah. you're going to be like this business unit, this segment, this oh, region. Good point. Um, sure. Because compensation calculation software isn't something that they've generally gone wall to wall with because they don't have a need necessarily to roll that up. You know, when you get into an enterprise tool like ours, then you see the capability and the advantage to rolling all that up and the visibility and the analytics that you can get when you do so. So that that changes the equation uh, slightly. But being good sales reps that we are, of course, uh, if we could take down the deal with the business unit and not wait for the entire thing, we're going to do that. We're going to land and expand. That's right. Exactly. Right. Because, you know, we, we know what time does to deals. Um, yes. So, right. But so that's what, so, okay. So, so, because we have a similar sales motion where one of the cool things about Atrium is it takes like five minutes to set up, like anybody within an organization can just like, you know, turn on an Atrium account by, by signing in with, uh, with a read only connection to their Salesforce yep. CRM. And so oftentimes we'll land in like the SDR team or we'll land in like the mid-market sales team or whatever. And so, um, it's it's good and it's bad. Like it's good insofar as like it can be very quick, which is great. Um, it's not bad, but like it, you're essentially writing a check for yourself to cash later, which is like, yeah. all right, we got to get these guys to success and we got to get them to success pretty quickly because if we don't, ain't no way we're getting to the other parts of the organization. And so that That's only right. becomes more critical um, up market. So maybe you can talk a little bit about like what you guys do in order to make sure that sure. like customers get to success because that really drives a lot, like requires a bunch of AE CS alignment in that regard. Yeah. And then, and of course the AEs are like, they're looking at that next op and that next op and the next op. So, you know, they're kind of like backseat driving there. So how does that, how does that yeah. work? Yeah. Uh, it, I think it comes down to making sure you understand what it is that you're selling uh, it, in the SMB space. It, it is more appish. You are selling things that uh, individual users are going to be using uh, not an enterprise function where you've got different people involved in it uh, on the, mm. the the larger end of the market is really important that you're focusing on driving better outcomes. And it seems that's something everybody says in a QBR and it's just like, it's so talked over, but that's the truth. You know, I like to say that good software is just one of the ways in which we deliver a good experience. And everybody sure. wants to buy software, not because they want to change the color green uh, on the screen and the report, like, although 
my VI yeah. days, I did, did lose some deals because I couldn't do like Home Depot orange. Or something stupid oh like my God. See, but, yeah, but that there you go. That's the worst. But, but they want it like their, their experience is terrible, right? With whatever solution they're using, whether it's manual mm-hmm. or another tool, they want a better experience. And so the software has to deliver on that experience. But to do that, you need the supporting factors of strong professional services, strong partner yeah. network. Uh, the customer success team being there to make sure that they are enabled, that the issues that come up in in process, that there's somebody standing behind them to make sure that those happen. Yep. If you're not selling that, you're just selling the product, then you're just in a race to the bottom. It's commoditized. They've yep. got a green screen. We get a blue screen. I can right click here. Like nobody cares. It's just like, it's just yeah. lame. And they're going to end up not even knowing what the solution is until they buy it. And right. you can ask I, your customers that, like, do you see a difference between these things? No, they're, they're kind of the same. Like, then keep looking. Don't buy anything right. yet. Right. Yeah. Versus like, hey, Mr. CFO, hey, Ms. CFO, you know, one of the things you're looking to do is to re- like reduce the defect rate yep. in, in your commissioning process. Because when you went back and did an audit last year, you saw this amount of overpayment, right? right. As, as an example. And then moreover, you know, the general counsel is up your you know, up your pants about the fact that like, you know, if you, if you mispay in some sort of capacity, that's, yeah. you know, exposes a, a legal liability there. Well, the good news, like, ain't no one talking about features right there. We're talking like right. CFO language with the CFO. And, and so then, you know, from a, from a success standpoint, it's, it's okay, cool. So the reason why we bought, why we bought was to reduce this defect rate over here and then lo and behold, in our I, here at HR, we call them VDR meetings, value delivery reviews, but like, you know, QBR, whatever. It's like, hey, you bought for this reason right here or these like set of reasons right here. And then here's the impact that's been been delivered, you know, irrespective of the colors of the button, irrespective of like, you know, where, you know, where the XYZ is on the screen. Um, and I feel that like that's something that the, the way that we do that um, here at Atrium is, you know, Atrium's you're very helpful for a variety of use cases, right? Like whether it's an SDR team or a mid-market AE team or a commercial or like a, you know, enterprise team or whatever, but like different people buy for different reasons. Like, hey, look, like we have a, you know, an AE prospecting initiative right now. We're not doing a good job of measuring it. We want to really make sure that we're measuring that well and like setting goals on that and driving compliance of that. That's why, you know, we want to, that's why we're buying Atrium for this team right here. There's a bunch of other ancillary use cases as well. And that's like, the, the, but what the customer success team needs to do there the ae team documents that and what we refer to is we call it a handoff dossier this mm-hmm. is like a google google doc template um where like the ae goes in there after close winning and like it's little it's kind of like paint by numbers they're like this use case this use case you know these are my you know these are my champions etc here's who's gonna like who's, sure here's there's continuity who's between all the different people and they don't start all over again from scratch yeah. exactly and then you hand over that thing and then like i mean one of the things we talk about in our in our customer success team is like we call, we call it abd um, always be discovering, right? Because mm-hmm. like you want the, you want the additional use cases, right? Like, oh, okay, cool. Like, so we got you dialed in here. Like, you bought because you had a pipe, you know, major pipeline hygiene problems. Looks like we've like you know killed that dead, right? Like your untouched opportunity counts are are way down, and your stuck off counts are way down, and your win rates are up. So that's fantastic. What's the next thing that we need to deal with? You know, what's the next thing, et cetera, et cetera. And so just like making sure that the the CS team is always like looking to score those incremental points. Um, especially if you're in a usage-based environment where an organization can consume more of your software. I don't think that like we're really in that situation because like we're seat-based, right? Like we're, we're seat-based on a manager basis. You guys are like, you know, seat-based on how many humans are being commissioned. Um, but what you want to do is deliver a ton of value such that then you can get to the next part of the organization, the next part of the organization, um, et cetera, well, it, et cetera. It doesn't have to be a post-sales thing either, right? I mean, like the always be discovering... I'm a huge advocate of selling through discovery, you know, like no, yeah. everyone's going to tune out when you put your PowerPoint on it's, it's nappy time. Right. Um, <laughs> and then like the demo comes and like, then the AE takes a nap and then like, all right, maybe they're watching, maybe they're not. <laughs> um, but like the real juicy stuff happens during discovery. And so if you, if you're paying attention to that, that's where the differentiation comes and that's your connection to the better outcome. And that better right. outcome when you do the discovery properly is what, what you've described is, providing revel- relevance to the different personas involved. Because otherwise, in, in a tool like ours, you might just be going after the user 
and somebody up top is like, I don't know, use whatever tool you want. You know, is it is it affordable? But if you actually sell properly through that discovery process, you'll reveal what the impact is to the CFO, to the head of finance, yeah. to all of these different people. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, if you and, and I think this is something, especially when you're when you're working in you know multiple personas, it's it's extremely important for the reps to understand what language they're speaking. Like, are we speaking Romulan? Are we speaking Klingon <laughs> here? Right. Yeah. Like the CFO cares about this, the, you know, like let, let's use Captivate IQ as an example, right? Like the person, like the sales operations person who like, you know, runs commissions or whatever, like, yeah, you know what, like using exactly or something might be a huge pain in their ass. And, um, and, you know, like it's, it's like, you know, error prone or whatever, but like, is that going to be enough to move somebody over versus the notion of like, you know, talking to finance or talking to the VP of sales, who's like, hey, we actually want to be way more agile about how we do commission plans or kind of like incentive compensation and what have you. Yeah. The problem is, is that like we can't change anything with like a, without a massive change order from a professional services standpoint for our current vendor. I got it. So it sounds like to me, you guys want to have like, you guys have this like legacy commission implementation right now that like don't touch it it's working don't touch it it's working and by the way don't touch it because it costs us 20 20 grand every time we touch yeah, it it's exactly so, yeah. yeah like what would be the impact if you were able to change commissions you know commission plans you know maybe on a quarterly basis or like be more agile and have it different for different teams how would that you know how would that impact things oh well like you know we just bought a new company and um and like you know upsell and like cross sell is, is super super important right now but like we literally haven't been able to get into our existing commissioning plan and so we're not selling as much as we're not cross selling as much as we should be because of the situation got it okay yeah. sounds like we just, people the way that you want to for the way that you want them to sell yeah so like sounds like we just so i think what i just heard from you is that you guys acquired a company and spent a bunch of money on that and don't have the cross, like aren't having the level of cross sell that you want right now because you've this busted ass old school like commissioning software. So it sounds like the, you know, the CFO, the head of corp dev, the head of product and the CEO care about you guys getting a more modern commissioning solution. Am I thinking about that wrong or am I off? Now, all of a sudden, this is a very different a conversation. conversation. Yep. <laughs> right? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And the, the, as you go up higher, like the, as you said, like, make sure you're speaking, speaking the right language. Yeah. The language with the CFO is very specific. Is it, is it less money? Are people going to be happy? Yes. Okay. Great. Like, it's, it's basically that simple. Like, but if you don't show that, and a lot of people don't, if you don't show that, then it's going to go, it's going to go nowhere. So you really have to work through exactly what that, uh, that is. And not just in financial terms, and this is particularly relevant now that the economy is, has caused yeah, little, little all tightened. sales cycles to slow down a little bit. Everyone's <sighs> dealing with this. Our um, favorite. Yeah. But you know, everyone says you got to focus on the ROI sell and all of that, and that's great. But that's the baseline. Like You have to be able to say, this will be less than what you're doing today. This will be a better experience. Uh, but you also have to appreciate the, the lift that's required. And the system that you just described, I like to call the uh, the Martian reactor and total recall. You know, when the, it was like, <laughs> we don't going. know what it is. Yeah, like somebody put it in, like three fingers, and like it'll, but I don't touch it, right? Like, <laughs> oh, oh my God, systems that's like that. That's hilarious that you're bringing it. I'm like totally remembering that that part. <laughs> don't touch need it, right? Cole Hagen. But they, uh, <laughs> if you want somebody to go in there and actually like rip that reactor out, you've got to put a pretty compelling case in front of them, right? Because otherwise, yeah. oh, yeah. You know, it's like, are, are you going to move your cell phone plan from one provider to another just because you're going to save 10%? Probably not, because right. you got to go get a new phone, numbers, the impact. Like, that's the stuff that keeps people emotionally from moving from one thing to another. The, the dollars, yeah. the ROI, great. That's, that's requisite. But, like, is it really going to be worth it? Do you really want to go have that conversation? with the, the rest of the org and say, hey, we're, we're going to rip the heart out of this thing, put something else back in. And they're like, why? 10%? No. No. Yeah, totally. The, um, 
I'm just like still laughing about the uh, the Total Recall stuff. Um, Don't make me so, start making quotes from Total Recall. I got the whole movie uh, memorized. Oh my goodness gracious! Um, probably everyone on like on the call is like, what are, what are these like guys totally. talking about? What what is this movie? It's the one with Colin. What's the name in it? It's an old it's an old old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Go watch it. Like the, yeah, the uh, special the, the special effects are like absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> in in modern terms. Yeah, so terrible. so so one of the things that you had mentioned was this notion of like how at least I captivate IQ and, and this also happens in other organizations um, as well. Like, you know, you start selling these deals to a, or like, you know, you have that, you have enterprise buyers show up. Maybe they like heard something from their buddy who's like at a, you know, at more of a mid-market, like more modern sales organizations. Like, oh man, I got this like smoking, you know, modern commissioning software. Like, oh man, yeah. I got this, like this smoking data-driven sales management software. It's like so much, so much rather than, you know, Tableau or like Looker or whatever. Um, and then that person comes in about, okay, that's great. we got a hand raiser. What yeah. about like when we need to turn around and like start going out and like knocking on doors? We're like, yeah. hey, like we see that the win rates on those hand raisers are not unreasonable. We see that the, you know, we see that there aren't substantial product deficits, um, that are that are kind of missing there. Um, we see that we're able to success people in a meaningful way. Like we're not selling shelfware here. Yeah. People are getting to success. You know, they're they're referenceable. They're high NPS. All that all that sort of jazz. Yeah. Well, now sounds like you know we're cooking with gas. How do we then turn around and then like start knocking on doors? Given the fact that you know we've got all these different personas, we've got different people who care about this stuff. Um, do you are you guys do you guys have much of a, a of an outbound motion going oh, yeah. with the enterprise team right now? Yeah, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think I mean it's a it's a balance between inbound and outbound, and it has to it has to be. And inbound's going to slow down, and outbound's going to pick up, and then vice versa. Yeah. And that's just the uh, the way that 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 works. Um, some people work for companies like I worked at SAP. Um, I worked at, at IBM, like names that you know that you could use that name to get in the door because they're like, oh, sure. you're, you're my SAP rep. Um, yeah, so I can, exactly. I can get in there. And whether or not that helps you pass to that point, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That's the doors the vast, open. Yeah, for the vast majority, like, ah, that name sounds familiar. I think I've seen you. I saw a podcast or something. Um, <laughs> so it's going to help you like that much, the name recognition um, that's out there. And as it grows and these companies like, like ours and, and some of the others get really uh, large. I'm like Anaplan now. I was at Anaplan before anybody knew who they were. Yeah. Uh, when I left SAP, I told my boss, like, I'm going to a competitor. I need to turn my laptop in. And he's like, who? I'm like Anaplan. He's like, no, you're fine. Take take your time. But yeah. now, <laughs> now people actually know the name. Um, <laughs> right. So but that's that'll help you on the outbound call in the first five seconds. And then after that, you got to say something pretty compelling to to keep their their attention. But I will tell you that it it does still work. You know, like everybody else, we'll record all of our calls so we can go in and monitor them later. And mm -hmm. it fascinates me that you can still pick up the phone and call a stranger and create an opportunity where one didn't exist. And yeah. I think that's uh, that's unbelievable. You, well, you have to what, appreciate like who you're calling and what their situation is and how long it's going to take, of course. Yeah. Well, what about the um, but what about the situation where like you were talking about an Anna plan? And also, I mean, like, like, look, we all know what Captivate IQ is because like, you know, we're all the sales nerds around here at MSP, yeah. right? So like we're on, everyone's up on like, you know, the new hotness, like the new way of doing things, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the the, the sales operations person or the, you know, the Salesforce admin or, or whatever at, you know, a thousand person, you know, a thousand sales, salesperson like manufacturing organization and like, you know, Southern Michigan or whatever, isn't necessarily familiar with that, right? Like they know all they know, all they know is Calidus, all they know is exactly, um, how do you break through that noise when you're, you know, when you're showing up there kind of unannounced? Sure. I, I think the, the first thing that you have to do, depending on the segment, if you're in a mid-market, especially middle to upper mid-market spaces, you have to appreciate how long it takes for a large company to buy software. And so the idea that you are going to go into, you know, a fortune 100 company and be like, Hey, yeah, how do you like your commission tool? Yeah, not really. Like, okay, well, how about you buy buy ours? Like, yeah, it's a great idea. Let's start doing that. Like, it doesn't work that way, right? Uh, if, no. it, if it's not an active project that everyone has said, we're going to be doing this next year and the next year rolls around, procurement's involved, IT's involved, yep. uh, the business is involved. Like, you got to appreciate those motions. And because you are probably not even the best sales reps are going to largely impact the time that it takes for a large company to do that. So pretty hard. 
the easiest like, thing all, you, to do all, all you'll do is piss people off oh yeah you'll just be a nudge and like and you know your manager's barking at you like why why and you're like because it's the biggest pharmaceutical right. company in the world like i can't no i'm not gonna influence their timeline sorry can't like, can't yeah yeah <laughs> can't, can't can can it come in this quarter right. no man yeah. no man we can't q2 like next year yeah probably but not this year that's um that's the case so i mean appreciating what that uh what that is and when you when you find that they're not in that cycle then you got to put them into a place where they can go create something and that's a lot of selling by proxy that needs to happen enabling your coach turning them into a coach turning them into a champion and then letting them go sell by proxy um, mm -hmm. the easiest thing to do is to find somebody that's like, yeah, we're about to start looking you're like that's gold. That's what you yeah. want. Cause then you're exactly. like, all right, I'm going to get on that six months, eight months, three months, whatever it is. Uh, I can go and close the, close the deal. So that's yeah. the well, active versus latent. Uh, which, which, I look at things. Exactly. And I think the latent thing, because like, I mean, it just is what it is, right? Like the number, the, 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 the this is why like the mid market is, you know, is, is powerful in, in, in its own way, because, yeah. You know, you can, you can catalyze, you can catalyze the sales process, right? Because yeah. what, what, like, there's not necessarily an intentional project, you know, kind of like planning thing. Like if, if there's enough pain, then organizations can do like opportunistic. Opportunistic buying. That's exactly the yep. way that I phrase that. Like there's no yeah. opportunistic buying in large enterprise. In the but, enterprise. But the yeah. other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Like, especially if it's put it on your corporate card, if it's that inexpensive, but you can get somebody to go do it because you're, you're two layers away from a decision it's just a lot, uh, it's a lot easier. So. Yeah. But I think the, the, so, you know, for good or for bad, like, it's kind of like, choose your poison, right? Like, okay, cool. Like we can create an opportunistic sale, um, you know, deal cycle here, but you know, best case scenario, we're talking about a 20 K deal. Right. And uh, versus, you know, okay, cool. We can't like, you know, create an opportunistic, an opportunistic sales cycle here, but it's a two, you know, 200 K ASP. And so it's just like, you know, recognizing what business that you're in, in the situation though, when you have those latent, those latent deals, right? It's like, oh yeah, you know, everyone hates the legacy, blah, 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 blah. It's yeah. probably not something like we're deploying CPQ right now. So that's consuming like all the resources associated with like the sales operations so function or whatever. Objection. But this is something that like, you know, is, is going to be relevant for Q4, you know, maybe Q1. Okay, wonderful, right? Like sound, sounds great to me. Um, what are your recommendations to your reps for like staying, like hanging out around the hoop, staying close to that sort of thing? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because you, like you just got a really good piece of information from discovery, right? Like you have a proprietary piece of like intent information. Um, yeah. It's kind of like similar to organizations, like when their renewal date is coming up for something like, you know, like, exactly you, like, thinking, you, yeah. like you just like worked your ass off to get that piece of information. Okay, cool. Like, don't like let it go out one, like in one ear and out the other. How do you have your reps like bird dog those things? It's like you're not going to keep it in pipe as an open ops, but you want to like track it in some sort of capacity. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, you know, off into the ether. Well, there's a whole other uh, sales operations conversation on how you track that in in CRM. Um, yeah, that I, for sure. I don't know the uh, I don't know the answers to that. Um, but whatever I did in Salesforce is probably wrong anyway. And I'll just I'll yeah. think about it. Uh, but I think <laughs> understanding, yeah. So I mean, w when it's a latent like everyone's unhappy. They know they're unhappy, but they're not willing to make that lift. Yeah, I just, equate yeah. those to like the, the office is trying to figure out where to go out to lunch, right? Like no one person's going to stand up and make the decision. Like, hey, you know what? We're, we're going to Applebee's, whether you like it or not. Like that, that guy doesn't exist anymore. You know, that uh, prototypical buyer decision maker that we were all sales trained around in the, in the nineties, it doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. Like you have to sell through consensus, and so if you have one person that has pain, you recognize that pain, you got to go get some other people that have pain because misery loves company. And once you have enough miserable people, then maybe you've got something. Then maybe you're yeah. like, all right, here's how we do this. And you take that renewal date. That renewal date is very important because everyone yeah. miscalculates how long it's going to take. Well, you know, we still have another year on our other solution. Like, all right, well, you we, better we get should to start, it. We should, yeah, I was going to say, we should start talking now. You don't need to let the tank run to empty before you yeah. go to the gas station like that you can actually put gas in it at any time. And by the way, it's probably a, a bad practice to let it run to empty for a number of reasons. Right, right, right. So in the situation, so it sounds like if we have, you know, a latent deal, yeah. then we like look at our timeline and we say, oh, okay, you know, when, or like, when are they, when is their, 
their renewal up or like when is their current contract up on their current yep. provider? Oh, okay, it's in it's in nine months. Hey, you know what? We're like locked up for another nine months anyway. Awesome, I hear you. One of the things we find, it's my yep. favorite. <laughs> one of the things we've, what one of the things we've I found it written we, in my notepad here. <laughs> one of the things I've, fa- I've found, right, exactly. One of the things we find is, um, you know, it can be useful to to like, you know, socialize some of this, uh, recognizing that you guys are not in a current buying cycle right now, recognizing that this is not necessarily a priority, but. One of the things that we find is can be very effective is just do a little bit of more like discovery. And I'm happy to, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take that on and bring back the findings. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, aggregate that. Oh, wow. Trevor, you're so helpful and thoughtful and, and handsome. <laughs> right. I know <laughs> my mom tells me that too, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but, um, and then like now you're in a situation versus, okay, so cool. And then like, what we can do is we can start like laying the groundwork and like, maybe now we're like quasi catalyzing a sales cycle. Cause like, we're, we're like getting permission to, you know, pull together the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the group of people who are, who are unhappy. And like, what we kind of say is like, you know, get the pitchforks, get the people with the pitchforks like going, that. right. Mm-hmm. Kind of like form a, cons- one of the things I always coach my reps on is we talk about forming a conspiracy, right? Like you're forming a conspiracy, <laughs> like you're getting them like on that. your side of the table, yeah. you know, all those sort of things. But like, you you, you want to do it with at least like, you know, directional permission, as opposed to like, actually, I'm going to do this, even though you literally told me not to, probably not a great, you know, great success, like great opportunity for that. What about in the situation, and especially in you guys' situation, because like, you're talking to enterprise companies and like, you know, commissioning software is like pretty important infrastructure, right? Like, yeah. don't, don't touch it, don't touch it you know, sometimes you got two year contracts, sometimes you got like three year contracts. So you might be like be having that conversation. It's not like, oh, our renewal is coming up in nine months. It's coming up in 18 months. Yeah. Like you don't want the rep like pissing away a bunch of time, like meet, meeting, you know, meeting a bunch of sales managers, sales man- like sales operations people or whatever, who are like probably will like exit the organization yeah. by the time like they're ready to entertain a buying cycle in nine months from now still nine months ahead of that that real sure what like what's a good way of staying around the hoop in that sort of situation well i mean there's some some situations where you should probably just leave the court because it's sure it's so far in advance like it, sure. if you and we get these you know we call them we're like hey kick it back to marketing yeah um let them sit on it with emails and whatever for if like they just bought something and they're like, we just, just signed a three-year contract three months ago. We're not even done implementing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they may be unhappy at that point. And because like the honeymoon's over sales cycles yeah. done, POC yeah. didn't actually work in real life, whatever. Yeah. Nothing uh, to so do about you, it though. Yeah. You could stay around that, but the likelihood of that turning into a deal 20% into the contract of your competitor, it's pretty slim. So stay yeah. in touch with them. The the reps should know, like, I, I have unhappiness here that I can nurture uh, for down the road. But really finding that that sweet spot where the timing is there and you can say, all right, hey, even if you're two years out, you know, let's say that you didn't use the last six months of that contract. We're going to go through this process. I know at a company your size, I'm going to spend three months in legal. So we actually do need 12 months to go through this process. Then you run systems in parallel, whatever. You don't just cut over, like, you can create an effective timeline to get there. Uh, but most of, often the, the customer doesn't really appreciate how much time they need in order to start yeah. introducing it. And then the renewal happens like, all right, well, we need to renew for a year. And then you're in that situation. And Yeah, that's the freaking worst, <laughs> right? Yeah. Where like they know they want to move, but like they're under the gun and like they just aren't thoughtful from a change management standpoint. And they like yeah. then renew or like auto renew into something that everyone has consensus on is crapola. <laughs> yeah, they want to get out of it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. it happens all the time. All yeah, the time. well, I think that's actually a really kind of thoughtful approach. There is just like I, I think probably the big coaching here is like like assess when the next renewal is, and yeah. then kind of fork based on that. Like under is it under eighteen months? Then maybe we can like do some stuff about that, right? Yeah. If it's under a year, then like. And they say, oh, you know, we're not renewing for like nine months or whatever. Then that's like just, that's just them not understanding how, right. like how complicated. The amount this of work that's ahead. Be. Yeah. And so that, and that's just like discovery, like, oh, okay, well, like maybe I can take you through, you know, the typical timelines that we see. And I mean, there's lots of organizations, as you might imagine, there's many organizations that have moved <laughs> off of your current solution to Captivate right. IQ. Well, um, and, and, and then typically this is what the sort of timelines. Like, so like right now we're actually in a perfect situation 
one of the things I was going to comment on is um, even if you're in that situation, like the the 18 month situation or like the you know 24 month situation or what have you, or if you're like you know not even in the, in the enterprise where you have these situations, but like say you're you talk to an initial person, you just do discovery with them, and they have like very very substantial pain. Yeah. Um, and, and like, just for whatever reason, there's like no capability of buying in the organization. Like, oh, okay. We just like fired half of our sales organization and like, everything's like a total budgetary freeze. Oh, but yeah. like you have this like very, very meaningful pain right now. Um, that's really like, you know, unhappy, like you're, you're really unhappy about one thing that you can do is you can stay close to the contact. So this is one of the things that we say is at Atrium, we talk about like the lifetime value of the human, mm. um, because they're not necessarily going to be at that org in the future. And so to the extent that you can stay close to them, and this is where like, you know, being LinkedIn connected to people is, is useful. It's actually a part of our pre-call planning process here at Atrium is like, not only do you like, you know, go look at their profile and like, look at their persona and like, you know, do a bunch of like research on the, on the account. Like in our case, like, okay, how many AEs do they have? How many SDRs do they have? How much sales operations is in place? Um, But also what we do is we have the reps, you know, proactively, LinkedIn connect and be like, Hey, really looking forward to talking with you today. Um, if it turns out that the person is like a really thoughtful, you know, proactive, like problem solving person that like you hit it off with, well, say, even if there's not an opportunity to like, you know, turn them into a champion right now for purposes, it's like turning them into a champion for some sales process sometime, even if it's not a sales process right now, I think that's something that, that people can do a much better job of. Yeah, it's and, just long-term thinking be, that people should be doing. Yeah. We, we have one of those going on right now where like the, the original sales cycle is still happening at this really big company. The guy got frustrated with the current situation, went to another yep. big company and then called us. And he's like, like, all right, we're doing this. I'm like, cool, I like that. That's you, you, yeah, you'd be shocked how many times that happens. And we actually see that quite a bit with, um, with our prospects where like we'll enter an organization because Atrium, like, Atrium takes like five minutes to set up. It's it it um, we sell on prospect and, and what we call customer data, um, and like show them you know their situation. Like oh you're unhappy. We're like oh okay. Well, like we have this like huge like Looker implementation where like you know half of it is broken and nobody like you know and and in order to get any sort of like ad hoc reporting going on, it, like I have to file a Jira ticket and wait like you know two weeks or whatever. Oh, okay, cool. Let's just turn this thing on, turn it on. They're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like I'm happier than a pig in mud. Um, and then they're blocked by, you know, the ability to actually transact because I don't know, like the data team is like, oh yeah, we could build those things for you, even though we can't even maintain the things that we've, we currently that have in place. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. But the point is what well, well, oftentimes what we see is that when a when a when a user and in our case like our users are like manage like AE managers a you know SDR managers AE leaders SDR leaders and then of course sales operations is an, an enabler like an internal vendor. Yep. Oftentimes, what we see is we see these managers who are like they're stymied and they're frustrated, and if their organization is unwilling to do things for them to make their yep. life easier, that tells them something about how the organization values them. And so we see this, like, it's it's kind of hysterical to see in the closed loss now. It's where it's just like, you know, champion departed because like, you know, grumped out with the organization's <laughs> inability to like do things, <laughs> do things. Right. I mean, it's, it's it, I'm not saying that like people quit their job because they can't get atrium or whatever, but like it shows up occasionally, like you see it, it in the closed loss now. Yeah, that's, that's yeah exactly. Which is like, cool. I guess you don't really give a shit about like, you know, manager enablement and helping people out. And so, you know, staying close to those folks ends up being really, um, important thing. One thing I, I wanted to ask about is because you're talking about like coach, you know, coaches and champions and kind of like, you know, developing both. Yeah. Um, if you find yourself in one of those sales cycles where there actually is juice going, like, sorry, where there is something going on, like with, there's a hot one here, um, you know, what are your recommendations to your reps in terms of um, one kind of differentiating between somebody who's, you know, a coach versus a champion? Um, reps love to be like, oh yeah, my champ, my champ, I champ this person up. Yeah, my champ. Yeah. Um, how do you differentiate between someone who's a coach, who's just the coach versus somebody who's a champion? And then how can you like develop people in, like get them into that champion land out of yeah. just kind of being like in coach land? If you can, yeah. I think yeah, if you the, can. The, the difference between words and action will tell you which one of those that, that you have. And both are useful sure. as well. Um, you, you've got coaches yeah, totally. that, 
aren't willing to do anything, but like they're giving you a lot of great information and that's cool. Like, there's an absolute place for that. Uh, I think one of the strategies that is imperative, and it's, this comes through the, the thoughtfulness of selling towards a better outcome as well, uh, is first and foremost, selling through integrity, making sure that what it is that you're, you're promising that's going to happen will happen. You're going to have, we're not dealing with a leaky bucket down the road, making sure that you're believable in that process. And mm -hmm. if there's something that you can't do, like don't, don't say that you and can don't, do it. Don't promise it. Yeah. Right. Um, it's just, it's just going to come out. It, it's, it's sooner or later. And then your name is going to be going to be mud. Um, you're not mm -hmm. going to get that phone call. You know, you might not get that interview at your next job because it's a small network of, uh, of people, but yep. getting the rest of the team involved. And this is the difference between SAS and perpetual is that in the old days we would sell like, all right, here's your link, go download it. Um, or here's your box, you know, we're shipping, shipping CDs. Yeah. Cognos, that was a big part. Like, all right, we're shipping the CDs. What date did the CD ship on? Um, having the rest of the team, having your executives, not just your sales executives, but your product, your CEO, like mm -hmm. this is a marriage between companies. So making sure that everybody is aligned before you even get there so that they know that the company is, is behind you. I think that's, that's a mm -hmm. critical step in the process that a lot of people leave out or do so ineffectively because they're not sincere about it. And if, if your CEO uh, is insincere, and just like firing off blank emails, like then that's not gonna not gonna work. If you CEO like genuinely like, hey, I want to go talk to customers. I want to own this. I want to hear if this isn't working because this is our lifeblood. God, leverage that. You, you absolutely yep. have to. I think that's something that like we we do this quite a bit with our reps is um or sorry we we encourage it, um but you know the <laughs> the level of execution I think it always could be higher because I think what ends yeah. up happening like we encourage like. Uh, like one founder should be spending time with um, you know, founders and, and leaders and like their delegates, right? Like VPs yeah. of sales, you know, VPs of customer success, et cetera. They should be spending lots of time with customers, right? Like the head of product should be spending time with customers. Yeah. Um, and, um, and like, it's beneficial to them. Now it's obviously, it's also beneficial to the deal and people don't realize this, right. As much as they, as much as they should. And so this is something that we talk about all the time and like, you know, nothing like, like nothing plays like a founder getting on the call with um, a founder, of the CEO getting on a call with like, you know, the, the VP of XYZ at some sort of organization. Like, are you talking about features? No, right. you know, like probably talking about like your kids or something, right? Yeah. Or like your business challenges or like the fundraising environment or, you know, XYZ or like AE hiring or like fill in the blank. But it's yeah. just like, hey, here's this human who I can like come and like, you know, choke their throat if, right. um, you know, if, if things go sideways. And also if this is the sort of, it could just be a 15 minute meeting yeah. too, right? Well, like this is, this is the sort of, yeah, totally. And like, this is the, got it. This is, this organization is willing to put this in here. What are the other, it's like a good leading indicator, mm -hmm. right? Like kind of the opposite of the canary in the coal mine of like, Hey, here's a great leading indicator. This organization has like very high give a shit for, you know, Absolutely. for the, for their, for their customers, which I think is like, well taken on your prior point, like, in, especially in the enterprise organizations are not buying the color of the button or whatever they're buying. Hey, is this organization like, is this vendor going, or excuse me, is this partner going to, um, are they going to like, you know, uh, move mountains to make me successful, yeah. irrespective of like the colors of the button and, and, and what have you. Sure. Um, do you, and it does um, help the sales cycle too. Sorry, but like that, that's, you got to be absolutely mindful of that too, that you, if you're trying to get to the CFO, because every sales manager, you know, is going to be like, Hey, did you get to the CFO? Like if I'm a sales rep. I'm not going to go call the CFO of a Fortune 100 company, but yeah. if the CFO of my company um, is the, is a peer to, because you know, they just took a company public or whatever, like that's a connection that can absolutely be made and you should make it and hopefully they'll connect and they'll, they'll be a back channel for if things go wrong and it's a safety net. But it's also like on the 31st, when that CFO is in Aspen, now you can call somebody and say, hey, can you text that guy that I introduced you to? Because the DocuSign didn't come in. So it's a yeah. stopgap connection like that you absolutely should have part of the sales team. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that we do here at Atrium um, because we are like a new category of software 
this I mean, it's probably a little bit different than than the Captivate IQ situation because like everybody knows that they need commissioning software. It's a question of like, are you going to use yeah. a modern version of it or are you going to use like, you know, a legacy version of it? In know our know case, and... yeah, exactly. In our case, um, it's it's more about like a new a new category where it's like, hey, like, you know, sales managers and sales leaders should have software that's like dedicated to helping them manage my metric. Yeah. Um, like this is a new thing. It's required capability. Like not everybody lives in the future. And so we're like pulling people into the future. And so what, what ends up happening is like when we identify people who really get it, this kind of goes back to the lifetime value of the human. What we seek to do is then, you know, use them in sales cycles, but not in like a customer reference way. Like customer references are great, but it's more kind of along the lines of like, hey, you know, we have somebody who's like very successful, um, but probably would be a fantastic person to, for you to meet because yeah. she's, a, she's the SVP of enterprise software over here and you're the VP of enterprise over here, you know, like That's you guys like perfect, to network, yeah. like there's like no reason for you not to, that. not, not to connect. Connections and, instead of references is a, is a really solid strategy. I like that a lot. Yeah. And it ends up being kind of like low, it's, it's kind of like less awkward, right? Yeah. Cause it's like lower lift and like invariably they will talk about your solution. <laughs> Yeah. Did this work? Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Might be, might be right. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. Because that's that's what they want, right? Like yeah. at the end of the day, what the person wants to understand is like, hey, man, like you know, Trevor says, you know, Trevor brought his, you know, his his founder onto the, you know, onto a call or whatever, and like I'm getting a good vibe here, and I've read the case studies, or whatever, but like you know, dude to dude or do that to do that, like is this is this legit? Yeah, it's legit. Right. Okay, great. So like, let's go back. Like, what are you, where are you golfing this weekend? Right. Like, and like, all it was is like a word to the wise sort of situation. And I think it also reduces the friction of if you go to your customers, and you're like, can you do a customer reference? Can you do a customer reference? Can you do a customer reference versus like, hey, I think there's someone that would be really cool for you to meet. Yeah. Would you be game? Also, you know, they're thinking about Atrium, but like, you know, so feel free to share you know, you're, you know, f f feel free to so share, but like, don't feel, call, right? don't feel obliged yeah. to go, to go, to go crazy on that. Um, yeah, I'm it, surprised that reference calls are still a thing that we still do that because, and everybody wants something so very specific that you're like, you know, if I'm selling to Pepsi and Coke as a customer, you're like, Oh, I have a, I'll put you on the Coke. Like, nah, they're totally different. They're not like us. You're like, how? Oh, okay. It's, like, it's almost like something you can just never fulfill. <laughs> And of course, they're going to give a glowing recommendation. Like if they didn't, then that's a, a huge screw up. So it's it's almost just like boxes being ticked. Yeah, for sure. And I, yes, I like, and I think that oftentimes there's an opportunity there to like help your reps get to the question under the question. Like, oh, I need a yeah. customer reference. Got it. I hear you. Um, yeah. It sounds like you know, correct if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like maybe you're not so sure that the representations about how this is going to work for your organization um, may come to pass. Um, maybe you can share a little bit about those reservations with me. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. This is like part of our RFP process. Da, 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 da. Oh, something else. <laughs> okay, great. Like, cool. Or like, yeah, actually, I'm more concerned about like this piece of the, the puzzle over here. Got it. Well, that sounds like more of like a solutions engineering kind of like conversation right there. So what my recommendation would be is blah, 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 blah right? Yeah. Versus like, oh, okay, there's a rock. You want to like, you know, go talk to a CIO for a Fortune 500 company that like to solve a problem that you don't actually, like it isn't actually a problem in the deal right now. Like what, this is the thing with, that I say to my reps all the time is like, what is the question out of the question? Um, no. I wanted to ask you about kind of like closing process stuff because you were kind of making jokes about you know, it's the 31st and the DocuSign hasn't come back, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I, you know, you've, you've created your champions, you're, you know, you're selected, et cetera, et cetera. What are some of the biggest recommendations or kind of like biggest, um, you know, best kind of like, you know, strategies for just keeping things moving, keeping things moving, making sure that things stay on the appropriate timeline. Um, so you, you know, get that deal in, you know, in the relevant quarter, it's appropriate on the last day yeah. of the quarter here. What, what would you kind of, you know, recommend to folks there? Well, once you're in that mode, and I, I like to break the, the sales cycle up into a few different categories, you're trying to get to the first call, then you're trying to get to selection, and then you're trying to close. And those are the three trimesters of the, of the deal. Uh, once you're in that third trimester where you're closing the actual deal. Selected then, and now, now on our way. 
now we're on our way. Now you're in partnership with them. Now you can roll out the mutual action plan that if you rolled it out before, they're like, what are you doing? Now you yep. can roll that out. You can project manage things. You can have real conversations about red lines, how long things take. Is there a DPA? Is there an infosec process? Who needs to say what to whom to get this thing signed? Who's actually signing? All of that. Like So whatever that is for your organization, having that in a checklist, I have that in a, a document that I go in and I'll clinic every single deal that anybody tells me is going to close on a certain day, uh, just so I can say, hey, you know, by the way, like we, we haven't even sent them red lines yet. And oh. they're a big company. They're going to red line. Um, we take this amount of time. They take that amount of time like this. We, we don't have enough time. Like, so we're in jeopardy here. So let's go address that. Um, I liken it to a, um, a final approach checklist. Like there's one night I sat up late uh, with a bottle of tequila watching YouTube videos on people landing airplanes, like airplane disasters. <laughs> As, as one does. As most people do, right? But they have like this quick reference handbook. They've got all these check, check uh, lists that they go through every time they take off and every time they land. I'm like, I need that for closing deals. Like, because I can't I keep it. track of all this stuff in my head. Like, but lo and behold, you'll find deficiency every single time. There's oh, something there's, like, there's always, yeah, always a bug. And yeah, yeah we, so uh, to your point about mutual action plans, we actually use dedicated software for this. We're um, customers of a company called Accord um, mm -hmm. that, you know, the, that we use for like, like not only just like deal rooms or whatever, like putting together assets, but then also like what, what ends up the, there's the customer facing stuff, which is all well and good. I don't know, like getting customers like check off steps or whatever, like, yeah, they're not going to do that. Um, but having an internal guide, like yeah. an internal recipe, like, you know, have we, you know, um, does it need to be redlined? Have we sent? Have we sent the contractor? Essentially, what they are is they're like sub stages on the op, but you're yeah. never gonna like have that many stages on the opportunity. So having all the different sub stages and yeah. kind of like things that it like your checklist, your your takeoff checklist or your landing checklist, um, is really important because if you miss one of those things, like oh, you know, is it a European organization? Right. Are they gonna need a DPA or like do yeah. they need a DPA GDPR in general? Questions. How long does it take to get into their system? Their vendor onboarding system is that three days? What system is it? Do we need that? Like, can they sign wet? Is, can it uh, be electronic? Like, all of that stuff matters in the last couple of days of the quarter. Yeah, exactly. And so if you're doing, one of the things that our, um, one of our sales managers, a gentleman named Sean Cardenas talks about is the importance for reps. Like once you know that you have a champion uh, and the person is excited to work with you, they're willing to pound the table, um, then to our point about always be discovering, it's like the next, now we have to do discovery on the purchase process and the path to partnership. Is somebody going to want to talk about like purchase process in the first call or like the second call or whatever? No. Like, wh why are we, yeah. why are we talking about it's like, awful what? To ask. it's like, oh, it's, know. it's the worst, right? Like, why are we talking about like what China we're going to get on our, <laughs> on, our <laughs> on, on our registry? Like this is bananas. Like yeah. you're awkward. Get out of here. Right. Like swipe left. Right, I forget. Um, <laughs> I missed that. I don't know. Yeah, no, me too. Right, but that's um, gonna be stage appropriate. That's absolutely, and most people just don't like. Like, we're not there yet. But that's when you when you mechanize that process so specifically by people that don't actually get in front of customers, you end up with making systems like that happen every single time, and it is just awkward. So yeah, but but having a system is important. But I, at yeah. the stage appropriate, and so that's why we're fans of like you know playbooking software because oh, you're down here did you do these pieces of discovery right right here right um oh you didn't great let's go ahead and do that and like <laughs> use that to inspect the deal because i have a hunch that like this is probably not going to come in as like maybe moving out of forecast right? <laughs> yeah exactly and so the, the the term that that sean likes to use there is like the path to partnership like what's the path to partnership here what are the different steps that are required and then just making sure that you're having an intentional conversation with your your champions about that. Like the way that we do that is we literally, um, one of our AEs, gentleman named Max, um, you know, kind of innovated this is like, so we turn on an Atrium account, we do what's, and then like a couple of days later, we do what's known as a pro, what we call a product tour, where we essentially like, you know, connect feature, like functionality in Atrium to things that they, you know, pain points that they talked about, like ramping or, you know, pipe hygiene or fill in the blank. Is the person fired up, right? Like, you know, trial closing, trial closing, trial closing, trial closing. Are they super juiced? Are they like, you know, are they ready to rock? Do they see a ton of value here? Do they see like the, the differentiation? 
awesome. Well, like, hey, we're out of time here, but like, let's just get 15 minutes, um, you know, in the next, you know, in the next couple of days to kind of align on kind of like, un like unpack our situation here and what we talked about. And then, um, you know, talk about potential next steps. And like purpose of that meeting is essentially like, it's, it's like a, the beginnings of a mutual plan meeting where you're talking about that alignment, right? Yep. In, in a way that's actually going to be effective where they're going to buy into the process. Yeah, I just sure. clicked on the link here so I can check out your board thing after the call. So oh, nice. Well, um, well, Trevor, unfortunately, we're out of time. This was super, super fun. Um, I appreciate you uh, you hanging out, taking the time to talk about enterprise sales and going up market in, uh, you know, for uh, for emergent companies and kind of like new new uh, new product categories. Um yeah, so next week, um, I'm super excited. We're going to have the SVP of sales, Chris Copeland from Built. Um, absolutely fantastic uh, um, commercial uh, uh, construction software company. He's based in Nashville. Um, you know, worked at a bunch of different other sales leadership roles beforehand. So that'll be a super fun time. Uh, Trevor, have a, you know, go with God uh, with your homecoming uh, you know, uh, chauffeurship this weekend. I, Absolutely. you know, I, I, I wish you the best. Okay. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. It's a great time. Okay. Later. See you.